the one guy we keep talking about and rightfully so is, is David Johnson. And Mm -hmm. I've been so impressed with him this year. I know he had so many um, highlight moments last year. The Duke game obviously comes to mind. Mm -hmm. I think the most interesting thing about him last year was how he tried to counter the counter. Uh, And, and obviously in the off season, he, he worked a lot on his jump shot, which has paid off this year Mm -hmm. it seems like maybe the final step is cutting down on the turnovers slowing down making decisions a little bit um a little bit more uh with a little bit more confidence but from your vantage point you watched him from coming in from high school to now what impresses you about him what stands out about david johnson and what you learned from being uh, alongside him well i mean so much impresses me but i think the biggest thing that i've seen that i've been impressed with was last year I feel like things came a lot easier to him because of the shooters we had on the court it extended the floor so much that he was able to slash and get to the rim almost at ease because he was 6'5 he's an athletic freak and I mean he's a very heady basketball player Mm -hmm. so now you're on a team he's on a team that doesn't have as many shooters so the floor can be a little bit more packed in but He's improved his jump shot. He has improved his decision making, despite some of the turnovers, which he's going to continue to learn and work through as he grows and watch more, watches more film with the coaches, and just learns the system better. But he, th- the transition from how he's been able to use his same game while also growing in it has just been very impressive. Um, he's he seems like the same player that's grown a lot, but he didn't have, he doesn't have necessarily necessarily the luxury of having like four shooters on the court at the same time. And he can just take his guy one-on-one and get to the room. He's figuring out how to score and make decisions at a high level and in a much more difficult way, which is just, I mean, it's, it's only going to get easier for him when he gets to the next level. And there are a bunch of shooters out there and the floor is extended and the lane is extended. He's just, Mm -hmm. he's got unbelievable potential. Yeah, uh, the sky is a limit. I hate to use the cliche, but that feels like Mm -hmm. the case with him. And he's such a smart, he's so, so smart, not just as a player, but he's just a smart guy in general. Exactly. And Um, I feel like sometimes he's almost too smart for his own good. He's like mm -hmm. almost one step ahead of the defense instead of just kind of reading and reacting. I feel like sometimes that's the only reason he gets into trouble is he's almost too smart for his own good. Yeah. Uh, But I mean, like I said, he's going to learn to get through that. I mean, I know NBA scouts aren't worried about that at all. That's it's a pretty common theme with um, young point guards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, th- it's so funny if you go back and actually watch the games and slow it down to his assists or turnover situations. You can like if you if you slap the pause button like before any of the action happens, mm-hmm. you can see where like how his brain is working and how he's thinking, and Definitely. it it's fascinating i mean he's he's yeah. a, he's got great court vision good pass he's got all these different ways that he can deliver passes that uh, see over the sophomore. defense yeah he, he delivers yeah. passes on the dot he can mm-hmm. he's strong enough and long enough to deliver passes across the court on the money like he, he has a great vision and anticipation it's just and, it, and i knew i know he was struggling a little bit in the preseason trying to kind of find his role on this new team and it's it's so good to see him you know prospering now and hopefully it continues throughout the rest of the season as he's grown so much as a player tell me about the um attributes that Malik Williams brings because uh, we don't know quite when he'll be back yet I think it's probably sometime in February but Mm -hmm. obviously getting an all ACC defensive type player back and a guy who's been in the system, like what does that do to to Louisville when he's back? I mean, it it can only help. It can only improve the team. Um, He brings the intangibles to the game, um, both on and off the court. I mean, he's an everyday guy. He's a leader. Um, And and even last year when he was going through some injuries, whenever he was on the court, whether it was in practice or in the game, you could just tell the whole vibe changed. Um, Everybody was more locked in. Everybody was held that much more accountable. And I know he still tries to do that from the sidelines, but you can only do so much. Um, and when he's on the court, he's just going to bring in a, a completely different level, even higher level of toughness and um, to this team. And it's, I can't wait to see it. Um, hopefully he has a speedy, speedy recovery and he can get back sooner than anticipated. Now, 
the last thing I'll ask you then about this team is, is there a guy, is there a non David Johnson sophomore who in your eyes, you're like really excited to see how the rest, or I should say second year player. Cause Jalen Withers is included in that group, mm-hmm. but is there a guy who you're like really interested to see how the rest of their season plays out after getting a chance to work out with them so much last year? I mean, I, I feel like I can't single one guy out. Um, Mm. You know, Jalen's just an athlete that has an unbelievable motor. Um, And as he continues to grow his basketball IQ for the game, he's only going to get better and better. All of his skills and his talent are there. You know, you got Josh that just is bred to score. He just knows how to score. Um, And as he continues to get better and come back from his injury and get adjusted to the speed and and length and athleticism of this level, like he's going to become a monster. Obviously, Sam, Sam's a McDonald's All-American. I mean, he, he's also bred to score. As he continues to get more comfortable in this system and, and gain more confidence, he's only going to do better. And then, you know, Q Slav, I can see him having an incredible college career. I mean, he's so versatile. He's one of the smart, highest basketball IQs on the team. He He's a system type of guy, a lot like me. It takes him a while, but as soon as he can figure it out and, and gain confidence year in and year out, he's he's going to have such a great career. I mean, I can I can c- continue to go down the list. They're just such a solid class that learned and they did so well last year. Not taking a back seat, but but listening to us older guys and and watching how hard we worked and the, all the preparation and things that went into to winning at a high level. And it's just it was the perfect you know, upperclassmen, lower cl- classmen group that we meshed so well together. And I mean, that group, as they continue to grow in their college careers, they're, I mean, they're only going to be better and better. Is Slozinski as entertaining behind the scenes as he is publicly? That dude, he's got a lot of energy. He is he's a, a chatterbox. Wow. He is <laughs> so funny. Every time I'm around him, I'm laughing. I'm having a good time. Um, he reminds me a lot of my little brother. So I always... I mean, enjoy spending my time with him. I, I, you know, treat him like a younger brother. I'm always talking to him. But, yeah, he's he is just as entertaining as he seems. 